Hello, this is Scott from ChemTalk, chemistrytalk.org. There are not enough experiments at home that kids can do that are safe and easy. The ones you see usually involve mixing baking soda and vinegar. Kids want something new. In this video, we show you real unique chemistry that parents can do with kids of any age using non-toxic compounds that almost everyone has at home. If the children cannot safely use an oven, then the parents do need to be there. I'm doubly excited because not only is this one of my favorite home experiments, but I believe this may be the first video on YouTube that properly demonstrates this experiment. In this experiment, kids and parents alike will learn about three types of reactions. Decomposition reactions, double displacement reactions, and precipitation reactions. They will learn about solubility and form a beautiful white precipitate before their very own eyes. After performing this experiment, my five-year-old daughter was comfortable talking about which substances around the house were soluble and which were insoluble. To do this experiment, you need baking soda, not baking powder, Epsom salts, four clear jars or glasses, and an oven. Two of the jars or glasses should hold at least 16 ounces of water, about two cups. A food, a food scale is useful to have, but not necessary. I just use a tablespoon. Optional accessories are a funnel and coffee filters. It also helps to have a way to label the jars, like some tape and a piece of paper. Okay, so let's get our four jars together and let's put the compounds in the four jars. In jar number one, we're going to place 32 grams or one ounce or two tablespoons magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salts. I just put two tablespoons in. In jar number two, we're going to do the same thing, 32 grams or two tablespoons of magnesium sulfate. Let's put 16 grams, which is half an ounce or one tablespoon of sodium bicarbonate baking soda into jar number three. Now the fourth jar will stay empty for the moment, but it is going to contain our sodium carbonate, which we will make in the oven now. So this is how we make sodium carbonate. We're going to place at least a quarter cup of baking soda in the oven for one hour at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 230 degrees Celsius. Just spread it out on a baking pan as much as possible. After one hour in the oven, you now have sodium carbonate. It will look the same, but it is a new compound, which we will prove in a few minutes. This is a decomposition reaction. The sodium bicarbonate decomposes in the oven into sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. Sodium carbonate is also known as washing soda because it is an important component in laundry, laundry detergent. It helps keep our clothes stain free. Here's our sodium carbonate out of the oven and cooled down. Now place 16 grams, that's half an ounce or one tablespoon of sodium carbonate into the fourth empty jar. Now, as you can see, I've actually made some extra sodium carbonate that I've placed into a bottle for future experiments. Sodium carbonate is a very useful compound and it can make pink, green, and blue precipitates in future experiments that you'll see on this channel. After you place the sodium carbonate in jar number four, we are now going to add one cup or 250 milliliters of water into each of the four jars. Then stir the water until everything dissolves in each of the jars. It may take several minutes. Wipe your spoon off before switching jars when, when stirring. The sodium bicarbonate, the baking soda, in the third jar will take the longest to dissolve and it will help if the water is a little warm. As you can see, all of these compounds, also known as salts, are soluble in water. Now you are ready for the main reactions. Pour the jars of sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate, jars three and four, into the jars of magnesium sulfate, jars one and two. Pour jar three into jar one, 
and pour jar 4 into jar 2. Many new compounds are about to be formed here. Now in jar number 1, we now have magnesium sulfate, magnesium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and sodium sulfate, all in solution and all in equilibrium. Although this may look like a clear liquid all around, they actually all exist separately in solution and ions. Now look at this. In jar number two, we have a precipitate. Magnesium carbonate is formed, which falls out of solution as a white precipitate. Magnesium carbonate is insoluble in water. Sodium sulfate is also formed, which stays in solution because it is soluble in water. This is a double displacement reaction that can go to completion because one of the products, the magnesium carbonate, is insoluble and removed from the solution as a precipitate. It's called a double displacement reaction because both of the reactants have parts of their compound displaced by something else. So we have shown that heating the baking soda in the oven changed the compound. It changed it from sodium bicarbonate to sodium carbonate. We've also, also shown that these two compounds have different reactions with magnesium sulfate. Now let's take a look at our magnesium carbonate precipitate. How do we separate it from the liquid? Let's filter it out. I'm going to use a simple coffee filter. This is called gravity filtration. It will take at least 30 minutes to filter. After all of the water goes through the filter, you can wash the magnesium carbonate with a little water to make sure you wash out any remaining soluble salts, like sodium sulfate, into the remaining liquid in the jar, which is called the filtrate. You can let the magnesium carbonate dry, bottle it up, and then save it in your compound collection. To dry it out, Lay the filter paper on top of several paper towels and let it dry in the sun or in a dry area. Here's what the magnesium carbonate looks like when it is dry. It's a white chalk-like powder. In fact, it is sold as hand chalk to weightlifters, gymnasts, and rock climbers. And you can use your magnesium carbonate for this purpose. The remaining clear solution, the filtrate, has sodium sulfate in solution. If you let all of that water evaporate, you will be left with sodium sulfate crystals. If you are doing this experiment with kids, you can tell them that all of these compounds are chemicals. You can explain that chemicals are not inherently bad or harmful. Some chemicals are toxic and some are not. You just need to understand their properties and take precautions when necessary. Just like driving can be dangerous, but it can also be safe if you are careful and take precautions while driving. As a bonus experiment, you can heat the contents of jar number one at 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius, just under the boiling point of water, for about 40 minutes to an hour on the stove, and the magnesium carbonate in solution will decompose into magnesium carbonate, and you will also see the same white precipitate. We will be posting more family-friendly experiments in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, and share it with others. There are useful links in the description, including how to donate and links to our education channel, ChemTalk Education. ChemTalk is a nonprofit dedicated to making chemistry fun and easy to learn and to removing the negative connotations associated with chemistry. We hope to see you soon.